falls back from from Pittsburgh. What an atrocious second half for the Tennessee Titans. They turned the ball over three times in the span of 10 plays. Yes. And they did not score in the second half and Pittsburgh oh, hey, by the way, barely Paul, had to move the ball. They did not score in the second half yesterday. They did not score in the second half against New England. They did not score in the second half against Houston. This offense is awful. Awful. It starts but does not end with the quarterback who's not elevating the play of the players around him. But he's been sacked 41 times. That's tied for the most in the NFL. With who? Do you know? Somebody terrible, I I can guessing. look it up later. Uh, the, the, the interceptions. He is tied for the most. Or no, he, he stands alone. He stands alone for the most interceptions in the NFL. And this is an offense that is not moving the football. They, I mean, they do it on the ground. They're not moving the football through the air. And that has left them in a really bad spot because they have a defense that yesterday is allowing 19 points that is put in positions. Let, let, let's put this in perspective, the 19 points. Put in positions yesterday that, you know, I kept hearing this locally and even some of the national shows. I was listening to a podcast last night, a national podcast recapping the NFL, and it's this, this term, Ben don't break defense for the Titans. Tell me where they had the opportunity to bend yesterday. Well, they, here are they, the they, scoring I mean, jobs. they were bent when they, when they took the field. They, the, the offense was the one bending. Here, here are the scoring drives. 18 yards for a field goal. 63 yards for a touchdown. That's their one legitimate drive. 31 yards for a field goal. Four yards for a field goal. Five yards for a field goal. I mean, when they're driving 18 yards, 31 yards, four yards, five yards for field goals, those are all off turnovers, obviously, that put them in good position. They can't do anything there. I mean, maybe you could stop a first down or two on the first two. When you're giving them the ball with a four-yard drive and a five-yard drive for a field goal, there's nothing. Uh, the defense is helpless there. I mean, they, they stop them, but they force them to kick field goals. But in this kind of offensive display by the Titans, field goals are plenty. And so um, there's, you know, Mike Vrabel's making a big deal out of saying the defense has learned just play where where the ball is when you go on the field. Well, I mean, they, they've come to terms with that over 13 turnovers in, in three of their last four games. But there's there's nothing you can do when the ball's turned over in field goal range and all you have to do is run Chris Boswell onto the field, who's one of the best kickers in the league, Very on good. one of the worst fields in the league. Uh, for field goal kickers, and he, he's, he's money. Boom, 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 boom. There's 12 points for free. Minus nine is the turnover ratio over the last four games. And again, they've, they've turned it over 12 times, 13 times, excuse 13 me. 13 times in, in the three last, games. In, in, in the three losses. Did not turn it over against Jacksonville. Jacksonville turned it over to them, and they won that game 20 to nothing and, in a shutout. And, and it has the feel, Hutton, this game certainly did. These are not... Pittsburgh takeaways. These are Tennessee giveaways. No doubt. There's not a lot. Yeah. You don't look at these plays and go, whoa, that guy made a hell of a play taking that, ripping that ball out or anything. Titans seem to have a vision that's kind of like this. They do not feel people coming. Vrabel talked about this again today. You've got to know that guys are leveraging from all angles and coming at you and everything. They work on this in practice. They talk about it. Guys are not getting the message. I, I, I wasn't saying that as an insult to Vrabel when I asked him that question yesterday. I was saying, is this getting through to people? He scoffed at that question. Then Tannehill defended the, defended the messaging, but he said that we're doing it in practice. We're not translating to the field. Well, it doesn't matter if you're doing it in practice if you can't take it yes. to the field. I mean, it's and a, if Anthony Ferkser makes a rare catch, turns, and then a guy simply gets a hand on the ball and the ball comes out, or if Racy McMath is trying to do too much and extending a play and the ball goes flying up in the air, I mean, they got to get back to basic basics. And they were talking about this coming out of the bye, get back to basics. There's nothing basic about what they did yesterday. I mean, it's basic for Pittsburgh. Playing a very basic team in Pittsburgh. Yes. Pittsburgh had no business. Sim very simple team. No business winning that game yesterday. Um, and it, it was a layup with some of the points. They couldn't get a touchdown. I mean, the, the one touchdown that they scored, they were set up perfectly by that Titans offense turning it over. And the rest of the time, um, you've, you've got the, the Titans defense that, that's holding the field goals. And the, the Titans offense, even when they scored their touchdown, it was due to, and, and it, 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 they're, they're allowed to do this. I'm, I'm happy for them. 
it was due to a 55-yard punt return yes. that set them up. It's not like they're moving the football on their own on a scoring drive. And on, on the Steelers touchdown, a lot of people upset about the officiating. I understand that. Bayard said all the calls were BS. Look, there were two calls against Fulton on that drive. The uh, personal foul on Friar Muth, uh, where it did hit him. It, it, was, it was an odd call because they were both on their feet when he hit yeah, him. Yep. Nobody's going to the ground. But if you look at the replay, it's pretty uh, – Obvious helmet to helmet there that put a guy probably in concussion protocol. Unfortunate pass interference in the end zone, questionable. Um, but you know, a good team needs to be able to overcome that stuff. Titans weren't going to overcome anything that went against them well, yesterday. They, a lot of people on the Jeff Simmons call, which undid uh, an interception. Is that am I right? Did that yes. occur on the same call? Look, if you're on the ground like that, whether you're being pushed or not, everybody was like, or a well. Or it, 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 it overdid a, a, uh, a fumble. Yeah, a turnover. Everybody's like, well, he was pushed. It doesn't matter if you're pushed. I mean, you should be used to this rule by now. If you're on the ground and you lunge low at a quarterback below the knees, that is absolutely roughing no matter what. He's got to minimize what he does there and kind of just arm swipe is all you're allowed to do. He knows that. The Titans know that. They were not upset, really, with that penalty. They understood and accepted well, it. Let's just Fans start- are going crazy with that. That's their first roughing. They're very good at not roughing. But when you're pushed and going down that way, that's the Tom Brady rule. People tear ACLs with that all the time, and, and the league's eliminated. You could not like the rule, but you have to accept the call. Well, let's, let's just look at the reaction of Jeffrey Simmons. On, I mean, he knew immediately – that he was that he was in the him. wrong, and they they flagged him for hitting him low. You just can't go below the knees or at the knees. It's the, the same thing as going over the shoulders. Right. Yeah. They're, they're, that that of of all the penalties and flags thrown to me, that was the most obvious. Automatic. Yeah. The Fulton two were both, I, I, and I think the personal foul was legit upon seeing it. Uh, the pass interference was a bad call. It was a bad call. Meanwhile, the 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 defense and special teams showed up. The offense did not, and and that is what is now turned up the heat on this team. You know, we, we mentioned the scenarios of what would benefit the Titans versus, you know, where, where could they, what did they want to happen in the New England indie game? And I came around and finally convinced myself in a, after, what, five-minute discussion that Indy losing would have been the best outcome because, again, the magic number's two. Yeah, but you foresaw this scenario. You said if, and, they, if these two results come – you got four days, then you're sweating against San Francisco. Right. You lose to San Francisco, it's down to half a game. Uh, Indy it's gets, down to the tiebreaker. Indy break. gets Arizona. Well, no, it's half a game plus a tiebreaker. Down to, it's down to half a game as Indy goes to Arizona and plays the Cardinals team that just lost to Detroit. It doesn't have DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, there, there are a lot of scenarios going on here. Um, and it, 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 you're, you get down to, you're, you're finally facing a little pressure for a team that had, like, a walk in the park uh, whenever Henry went down. Henry went down. They won four straight. And potentially, you've got the Colts within a half game as next Sunday rolls around if they lose to San Francisco. Did you see Jim you do have the You do have the tiebreaker. But again, it goes, it goes back to what could have happened here. 